Good morning, everyone, or afternoon, depending on where you are joining us from. Thank you so much for joining us for this Microsoft Reactor event um, with Jay Gordon, one of our cloud advocates here at Microsoft. We will begin shortly, but just a few quick announcements. If you do have any questions, there is a live event Q&A um, section. Please feel free to answer questions there. We'll also be sharing some links to Reactor Meetup pages, um, our YouTube channel where you can find this recording after the event um, if you want to rewatch it or if you're not able to stay for the entire time. And then also the Reactor survey. If you do have a few minutes, we really do appreciate you taking some time to fill out the survey. Um, it just helps us bring some better programming and bring in the type of events and topics that you are all interested in. So again, thank you so much for joining us today and I will hand it over to Jay. Hey everybody, how are you today? My name is Jay Gordon. I'm a cloud advocate uh, with the Microsoft Azure advocacy team. Uh, I want to thank my uh, my lovely MCs and hosts for being a, a, a wonderful, wonderful lineup for me. Um, introducing me. I really appreciate it. And um, since we're all here, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, there's a lot of things you could be doing at 9 a.m. on the west or 12 on the east, but you're here with me and so thanks a lot. So why don't we go ahead and talk a little bit about what today's presentation is, okay? So today uh, we're going to be talking to you uh, about a story and it's called the interns or DevOps in it for themselves. And it's a story about a team of beginners who take on a problem and solve it by implementing DevOps tools and methodologies. And so before we jump in, let's take a look at what we're going to be discussing today. All right. So we're going to meet our interns. We're going to learn about uh, their static website, which is in Hugo. We're going to learn how to build some, uh, ensure that we have reliable, repeatable builds for their website. Uh, we're going to discuss what happens when a bad commit happens. And then we're going to ensure future intern classes are set up for success. Sound good? And you can follow along. You don't need a ton of experience. That's the great thing about this. Uh, what we're going to do today is uh, give you something that you uh, can just do on your own if you want to. So you can grab this link or hit this QR code and you can grab the code and all the other things associated with this particular session. Thank you. So I said today's story is about a group of interns, and it's a pretty typical group you'd expect in a software development team. We've got CS majors, some design experts, and even a few people who are interested in infrastructure this semester. So every year, Tailwind Traders does its best to include a variety of students from across the globe to be part of their company. And if you don't know Tailwind Traders, it is actually the globe's most successful fake company. Uh, customers take part in the long and storied history of purchasing fake products from this incredible fake corporation. So if you have a second, let's give them a, a little bit of an applause for being so successful at being both fake, but good at it. Uh, so anyway, let's go back to our team of interns. So every intern class at Tailwind Traders is given a major project, and that major product is to be a testing ground for ideas that you may actually see in production at Tailwind Traders. And so we've got different projects and, and, and they're meant to provide these interns with common problems that they may find in the world uh, in different IT organizations or even uh, places that were in IT that just have really, really big IT infrastructures. Um, and so this year, the focus is going to be on a static website. You uh, each uh, intern class to keep everyone up to date on what's going on with the interns. And uh, let's take a look at the site. Uh, every year, this intern class maintains the site. It's just a Hugo static blog, and it's currently maintained in an old and antiquated way. So I'm going to kind of show you uh, the code for a second. So let me just go ahead and I'll bring that over. And so our code is, is pretty simple. Uh, what we're going to see here is it's a Hugo blog. And Hugo is essentially made up of a, simp uh, a few different uh, pieces of uh, code that are essentially taking markdown. Uh, we'll take a look here in content. 
It's a little slow, please excuse me. And you'll see that we have these markdown files. And so these markdown files essentially become um, what uh, makes up our, our website. So what happens is these markdown files are converted into CSS and eventually you're able to uh, see them converted into HTML, uh, JavaScript, whatever it is so that we have a static HTML website. We don't need to have anything too um, crazy put together. So anyway, let's go back and take a look. Uh, so we took a look at our, our website, but the problem with it is that it doesn't scale. Uh, the deploys are manual. Uh, there's no tests that are uh, going on, and uh, if there's a bad deploy, then we're dealing with a process, I gotta be honest, it's, it's really useful if it was 1999, because we're taking an FTP server and we're updating these files, and if there's a bad change, it takes down the whole site, and this method that we have just doesn't lend well to sharing with future teammates. So for the most part, it's just legacy or something that we're just keeping around on an old system. And it doesn't really have much in the way of docs. So we're really stuck with some hard stuff to work with. So now we're going to talk about how the interns are going to improve the existing process. Their focus will be on ensuring reliable builds and that are done by an automated pipeline, ensuring that it's done in a collaborative method. And this specifically brings in the idea of DevOps. Well, what is DevOps? Well, I, I hope I get this right because um, someone that I report to that reports to this person wrote this. And so DevOps is the union of people, process, and products to enable continuous delivery of value to our end users. What does that mean? Well, that means that we want to focus on implementing change in our organization that will take um, our customers and our processes at the front of the line and make sure that we can focus on things like culture shift, uh, less reliability on individuals and avoiding, avoiding hero culture, uh, conversations and communication. Uh, so we know that if we have issues, we're talking about them and we're making sure that they get resolved. And then things like logging, uh, monitoring, tooling, automation, all these ways so that we can collect information about what we're doing and make sure that if something happens, we can you know, resolve it, write up documentation about it, do uh, postmortems on it, whatever we need to do to make sure that the things that we have are automated and they're storing information about what happened, when it happened. And so I want to get a little calm here. And uh, when I'm talking about comms, I'm not just talking about a few calm people in a room. What I'm talking about is an acronym. It's a principle-based DevOps framework created by Jez Humble, who is the co-author of the DevOps Handbook and the other book, Accelerate, really, really great DevOps books. So let's talk about what COM stands for. And, and the first one is culture. So we're working together and understanding our diversity, our potential, and I'm bringing it all together. So really what this really focuses on is our ability and our differences help bring our experience together, and, and, and that's our strength because we have a, a dynamic and diverse team that's able to accomplish a lot, not by just working as a single silo, but working together as a collaborative effort. Automation. And so automation, we want to implement uh, automated builds, tests, and deployment, uh, commonly known as continuous integration and continuous delivery. What we want to do here is ensure that our automation is taking care of a lot of that manual work, and if manual work uh, occurs, we need to automate it. We need to ensure that things are done in a more efficient and uh, automated process so we don't spend a lot of time doing manual deploys and, and trying to fix them when they break. You know, we want to create ways that when something doesn't work, it doesn't get deployed. It gets stopped. We can get a report on what exactly failed in the process and then correct it. And so now we want to talk about being lean, or we want to optimize your resources so that we ensure the fastest and most reliable outcomes for our customers. So we're doing smaller, uh, more uh, incremental changes, and we're focusing on continuous improvement. We're not looking at the old water flow fall style of development. We're looking more agile. We're trying to get smaller things done faster so that we can eventually provide those new features and fixes for our customers so we don't have to focus so much on getting everything all in at once. 
We do a little bit at a time. We work in sprints. We work in, uh, with Kanban boards. We organize things. And then after we organize them, we measure them. We get m so much help by doing measurement of the things that we're actually uh, building and then deploying. So great organizations know that by collecting this data from their process, they can make determinations on how to make improvements. So that's monitoring, logging, tracking key results, uh, and then planning the work that actually needs to be accomplished before going in and pruning things, uh, looking in your backlog, making that you've got a proper uh, workflow set up that when you do need something implemented, a, you, you know how to go through the process of, say, entering tickets into a, a, a Kanban board, uh, having a workflow, maybe a swim lane, whatever it is. You can work together and you can measure what happens after. And then when you do that measuring after that, you're going to want to share the information. It is so important that we share information after we've actually collected it. And that gives us a shared goal. And that shared goal allows us to uh, work together and make our customers happy. Because if we all believe in the same uh, idea that we want the site to be on all the time, we want the most features uh, available for our customers. Uh, if we all have that shared goal, I think we're going to accomplish it. And so the big ideas are doing the DevOps. So first, we're going to plan, all right? We're going to find out what work we need to do, we're going to sign it, and then we're going to focus on those uh, smaller changes that we're going to complete faster. Hosting, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to use uh, Azure Static Web Apps. Uh, this is a kind of want to call it a DevOps forward product at Microsoft. Uh, it's free because it's in preview. It's reliable, customizable, and secure. I believe in this product. It's really great. Uh, then we're going to use GitHub Actions for our CI and CD so that we can build, test, deploy code using your GitHub repo that's already existing that you might be keeping your code in. We'll use workflows and GitHub Actions that are written in YAML uh, will make secrets management so much easier because we won't actually have to uh, build the secrets ourselves. Azure will take care of it for us, and then we can deploy from different branches if we want to. There's so much we can do with this product. And then, obviously, we're thinking about the future always. So we want to make sure that we're testing our deploys. And then when we make new commits, we want that to be triggering a new build so that we're just ready. Uh, it, it just happens. We do a push to master, and that master branch, uh, once that happens, it's triggering an event that starts the rest of the actions. Starts the build process, eventually starts the deployment. Um, that's how you want this to go. We said automation was important. And this is setting up our future intern classes for success. Because this year, we're setting it up. We're creating this whole workflow, plus, workflow process. And part of that is making sure that we're documenting everything. So when the next year's class comes in or the next semester's class comes in, they can look at the documents, onboard, and then just begin using the same process that they documented for uh, from the last uh, class that was around. So next, we're going to talk about Azure Static Web Apps. And this is the, the, the essentially the, the hosting for our uh, our Hugo website. And it's a single unified workflow uh, based on GitHub Actions uh, from source code to cloud. Uh, it's got easy to add uh, serverless APIs powered by Azure Functions to help extend your application. And it's got integrated authentication with flexible role and access definitions. So essentially, you wrote your code and then you pushed it to GitHub. You intended to set up CI, CD, but it's being done for you. And if you need APIs to get data, will they be served on another server? No, you'll just use a serverless process. And then you can route those requests to your uh, app so that if you need to make sure something is done from a database and brought to your application and presented, you can do that. And of course, when we're putting things on the internet, we want them to be secure. So you definitely want an SSL certificate and a custom domain. That comes with it. Your users, they must authenticate. If they're going to be using Azure's uh, authentication system, you're going to want to make sure everything is set up in uh, your Azure AD. That's in just a part of this. Um, security rules so that you can ensure only certain people can do certain things when they're authenticated. So you'll go, you're able to define those rules for authorization. 
And then ultimately, you need your app to reach everyone in the world at global scale. Well, that's one of the benefits of using Azure, obviously. And all together comes together so that you can serve your application and make it available for everybody in the world. So how does this look? So you create your Angular, your React, your Vue, your Spelt static site generator, or whatever, just an index HTML page. And then you push that. You create a PR. And then say you want to go ahead and start that action once you've pushed it to master. Then uh, that action kicks off the process of getting your uh, site built. And so what we'll start doing is building our static content, our JavaScript, our HTML, our CSS. And then what we're going to do is deploy it to static web apps. And so it takes the package that's built and eventually provides it to static web apps. And then your website is online and available to the world. So let's talk about the team's plan for implementing DevOps. They're going to be moving their site to Azure because of the security, the guarantees, a uh, platform as a service for using static uh, web apps. Uh, that platform as a service or being able to use a platform to deploy your application without having to build all the underlying infrastructure. That's what we're using. Azure Static Web Apps, the preview service. It reduces the overhead of hosting. There's no more uh, having to go and reboot servers. There's no more having to uh, install Linux or something like that or Windows. It's not necessary. We're going to be using a platform as a service. This allows us to implement continuous integration and continuous delivery. So no more FTPing or dragging things over. Uh, it's not necessary. Every time we do a commit, we have it go through an integration process where it builds and tests. And then once that completes, it deploys. If it doesn't complete properly, if a uh, failure happens in the process, it will stop. It will keep the existing version of our application online and it will let us know it failed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the culture and diversity and improvement of our team because uh, our team knows how to work together. They will be able to accomplish more. So we're going to lean in our diversity as a team and they're going to work on education, learning and collaboration because continuous learning, continuous education and collaboration will make us successful continuously. And then we're going to be customer focused. Just we must be dedicated to ensuring that our customers are always in mind so that we create an incredible experience and give them the uptime and reliability that they expect. So I think it's time for me to do a little DevOps. And if you want to follow along, feel free. Um, you can just go to this URL and get the code and all the other things that go along with this session. So I'm going to drop out of my presentation for a second. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring up the demo. Sound good? Uh, I can take a second if anybody has a question. Um, are there any interesting questions from our group so far? Hey, um, somebody was asking if you happen to have the slide deck or notes to share out after. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so this was a talk from Microsoft Ignite. And if you go to aka.ms j at Ignite, I think it was or j Ignite, one of the others. Uh, uh, j Ignite, I believe is, I can share it after. You can watch this presentation again with all that information. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my uh, demo. Sound good? Cool. So here we are. Uh, what we're going to do is start doing the DevOps. And so right here, what we're going to see is our application and its code. So what we'll do here is we'll take a look and see uh, we've got our content and our content is made up of these markdown files. And when these markdown files are rendered, they go into this public directory and we can see it. So all I have to do is go to the root of this directory right here and type Hugo. And so that just starts to do the rendering and building it of the HTML. So if I were to make a change, say here to about, uh, I would then commit it to GitHub and uh, 
it would eventually have all the reflected stuff and, and what's going to happen in the build process and we'll take a look right now so what we're going to do is we're going to create a resource and what we're going to look up is a static web app so we'll go here static web apps preview select it we're going to go ahead and click create and so right now we're going to create a resource group what is a resource group it's a place to store your stuff like uh, george carlin said um it's kind of like an egg carton you can take an egg carton and you can put things in it and if something inside it is broken you can take it out or you can move something into another egg carton or if there's a bunch of bad eggs you can just take the whole egg carton and throw it away and not worry about it that's kind of what a resource group is so we'll create one we'll call twt interns so this is a group for our uh application uh components uh, the things that are going to make up our resources so now we're going to give this a name so this is just an identifier this is not the host name the host name is uh just automatically generated and then you can add custom host names to that so right now we're just going to call it twt intern like i said this is just an identifier then we can select the region these are the current regions in the Azure uh, global network that are currently available. Uh, these data centers are where in preview this service is. I'm in New York City here in Brooklyn. Hey, everybody. Uh, so I'm going to pick East US 2. That's the closest to me. So the next thing we're going to do is see the SKU. This is the cost. Free. Pretty cool, right? That's because it's in preview. When it gets out of preview, there could be costs. There could be other additional services. Right now, you're getting a basic version of this service uh, for free. So now I can click sign into GitHub and I'm going to actually authenticate to my GitHub account and see now I have access to give control of my repositories and update GitHub action workflows. This is the big part. We'll look at how that. So what I'm going to do is authorize this. Uh, let me take this over here. I must have not logged in for a while. OK, I'm authenticated. Great. So now once I'm authenticated to my GitHub account, now I can go into my account and bring up the repository I talked about. So let's go to TWT interns. We're going to want to go to this repository that's here as well, and we want to deploy this. To do so, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our organization, which is me, Jay Destro. We're going to go to the repository and it is TWT intern. So I got a lot of things. We'll just pick the right one, TW intern. Then we'll pick the branch. And so now we have an opportunity to pick the build details. And this is really cool because we can see all these different types of frameworks like Angular, React, Svelte, Vue, Blazor. Uh, so all these different, whether you're using JavaScript or .NET. Um, also, we have uh, Gatsby, Hugo, ViewPress, which are common uh, static site generators. And that's what we're using today. Uh, also custom. Let's say you just wanted to serve an HTML page that you've already generated, and it's not using any of these. You can just use custom. So what we'll do is we'll go to Hugo. We're gonna pick our app location. And so we've got these options. What does that mean? This is the location of your application code. For example, slash represents the root of your app, while slash app represents the directory called app. So what we can see here is our directory is TWT intern, and our app that we're eventually going to provide, uh, we'll see in a second. So API location, what does that mean? If I had an Azure function that did something like get information from a database, uh, allow you to fill out a form, uh, what I could do is provide the API location and the URL right here. I don't have one right now because we're just doing a basic one, but we can go ahead and add Azure functions into our application if we needed to. And so app artifact location, what is that? When Hugo renders our website, you can see here it builds all of these files, these static files right here. What happens to them? They go here into the public directory. The public directory then has uh, all these different directories made up for our different um, content sections. So about, you can see here, about, and there's an index page with the code that eventually will be our uh, index for the about page. The same thing with projects, same thing with news. So our app artifact location is just the public directory right here, or as you can see, 
right here. Same thing, just whether it's on my local computer or here where the actual build is going to happen from. Uh, so let's go ahead and just click tags. What is tags for? Let's say you wanted to make sure that you had this set up for the intern group. So we can say department interns and we can say uh, environment production. OK, so now we're going to do a review and create. Now let's talk about what's going to happen in this process. Uh, we're going to be using the subscription I have. We're going to create a resource group. We're going to create a name for our application. We're going to have a region of US2 where our application is going to be deployed. The SKU is free. The repository we're building from, this URL. The branch we're building it from, master. The application is slash. The API location, we don't have one. The app artifact location, public, and the tags that we set. Now, why do am I showing you that whole process? Because all of this can be stored into infrastructure as code in ARM templates. Um, these are templates that allow you to then uh, just take all these uh, different parameters we set, add them to a library, deploy them uh, from PowerShell or uh, Azure CLI. Uh, so all I have to do is click download and it saves the template. And we can see the template is just JSON files where ARM stores everything. But let's just deploy our application uh, and click Create. So now uh, this will initialize the deployment. Uh, Azure Resource Manager just got our created template, and it's going to do the process of what's inside the infrastructure as code. The infrastructure as code rules said create a uh, resource group, uh, create an Azure Static Web App, and then build the application. So let's go. Our, our resource is already ready. Let's take a look at what's been built. So you can see here we've got a, a URL that represents our website. And then we see here the source. So I'm going to bring this out just a little bit more for you. And so now we have our source. This is where our code was built from. And now we can see our deployment history. So what we're going to do, because we see here now we have this workflow, workflow file that I mentioned before. Let, let's go ahead and take a look at this by going into GitHub Action Runs. So if you can see here, we've got this CI section that's been created by Azure here in GitHub Actions. And what happened, and, and I'm going to go ahead and show you in a second, uh, is now we've kicked off a process of our CI, our build and deploy, and then uh, eventually to close the request and the job. So what happened here? How did that happen? GitHub uh, accepted a new file from Azure. And that file was a GitHub workflow file. And if you take a look at it, it's just some simple YAML that explains once we uh, deploy to Azure Static Web Apps or, or build, what, what's going to happen? What do we want to do in this GitHub action? So let's take a look at it. And I'll open it up a little bit more for you. Is uh, on a push to the master branch, and these are if they're these different types of uh, pull requests. Um, we're going to go ahead and do a build and deploy job. What does that mean? If GitHub event equals push from a pull request or an event action is closed, then what we're going to do is on an Ubuntu latest image, we're going to do a build and deploy job. We're going to check out our code. We're going to build it using Hugo. We're going to deploy it using Azure Static Web Apps. And then what we're going to do is we have a secure a uh, token set up between GitHub Actions and Azure. Uh, and then eventually we'll close the poll job after we've done the deploy. We actually can see here, here are our deploy locations slash public like we said when we configured it. And then here's our API token to uh, do the actual deploy. And uh, what we can do, setting up that API token now was automatically done for us. I didn't have to configure any uh, keys at all. If you look here in secrets in the settings of our repository, you'll see here is this new secret that was created. Here's an old one that I had. And when I'm done with it, I can just go click remove. Um, but you'll notice it's called Azure Stat Web Apps API Token Ashy Hill blah blah blah. Uh, let's go back to TW. Notice that Ashy Hill and then this random string. So it creates this workflow file 
based on your URL name. Cool. So let's let's see what happens. We're going to go over to this build. So if we go to actions, we can see our builds already complete. Let's take a look at what happened. OK, so we completed two jobs in one minute and 26 seconds on the push to the master branch. We kicked off this new build and deploy. And what happened is we set up the job. We said that we're going to go ahead and we're going to download the repo and download the action repository that everything exists under. We're going to start a build container using a Docker container to actually uh, grab our build environment. We're going to run our actions. So we're going to sync the repo from GitHub. We're going to delete some old stuff here. Uh, then eventually we start building. So as you can see here, the Docker run starts the build uh, image that we need. Then we provide where we're actually building it from. And you can see it detect the platform, Hugo. It found the source directory and the destination directory. Here we can see it rendering and eventually it gets to the point where it finishes the build and does the post run deploy process. So what happens here is it creates a package of these files, this build artifact, and that build artifact is eventually zipped up and brought to Azure and Azure deploys that zip file into the static web app service. And then eventually it closes up the job, gets rid of all the stuff that's been created. And then if we go here, we get our website that's been built. Pretty cool, huh? So now what I'm going to ask you is this. Uh, I'm going to get right back into it. One sec, swap displays. So what about changes? So we, we, we've done all this. Um, we, we've shown you how to actually uh, implement the website using GitHub Actions and, and using the deploy process. But what happens when we want to make a change to this website in the code? Well, let's take a look. So we uh, have obviously made a change to our repository recently uh, because I added that GitHub Actions workflow file. So let's go back and I'll show you what I'm talking about again. If we go on a code, the, the kicked off deploy process added a directory called GitHub uh, and inside that put this workflow directory with our workflow file. So if I go here now and I type git pull, we'll see that it actually, here it is in my local repo, here's that workflow file. And so now I said, what, what do I wanna do if I wanna make a change? So let's go to news and let's say that we've got some new news for the team. So I'm just gonna copy this block. And let's add today's date. And that's part of the news today, okay? So then what we'll do is we'll save this and then we'll type Hugo. It'll render it. If we wanted to do a local uh, view of it, uh, we can. We're just gonna move along because we're here doing a demo. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is git add. Uh, normally you would git add git commit minus m uh, new stuff and then git push. Now, normally you would not do this directly to master. What you would do is create a new PR, create a new branch, um, submit it, have someone review, and then eventually uh, have that branch merge into master, then that would kick off the CI CD process. But for today, what we did was we just made our change to master. And now we can do uh, is, is go back to actions here and we can see here's our new uh, commit, new stuff. If we take a look at it, same thing happened. Build and deploy job. So what what if I made a mistake? What what if instead of you know putting this code, I actually made some sort of real big mistake in the process? Maybe I went into this config.yaml file and typed in a bunch of junk. This would fail. This process would not continue. This workflow would simply fail and then uh, send an alert saying, I'm sorry, I can't do this. There's bad code here and I will not deploy it because of that. 
And so eventually then we know we can look at that. Uh, maybe we set up alerts to find out that our builds failed. And then once we've finished our build, uh, we can go ahead uh, and, and re, uh, we, I should say, once we fixed our build problems, we can eventually redeploy them uh, by just committing them to master after we've uh, made the change in our separate branch and it's been reviewed by our team. So we've gone ahead and we you can see, I, I, the reason I'm doing this is I want you to see that live deploy job that we did before. So that's it. That's the whole deployment. In these like minute and something seconds, we watch deploy happen. So let's go back, let's go to our website, let's go to news. There we go. So let's bring this home, all right? Why don't we bring this home? So our interns have come really, really far and it looks like they got the job done. Uh, the tools, the culture, everything, it really seemed to help. And, and just like our intern team, you can do this too. These are processes and procedures that you can implement on yourself. And why? It's because I said something at the beginning and I'm gonna repeat it because Donovan would want me to say it. DevOps is the union of people, process, and products to enable continuous delivery of value to our end users. The big word I want you to remember here is people. You're all people. You're all pro able to be part of this process and to show your potential and to do the DevOps. And that's it. I'm Jay Gord. Thank you very much. Um, I'm happy to take a couple questions and uh, and see what else you might want to be uh, want to talk about. Thank you, Jay. Um, there is one question from Sid, and he said, "What would the difference be for an application that wasn't using serverless API?" The difference is that. With a serverless API, you're actually implementing a another process to handle maybe some more complicated um, services for you. So specifically, uh, I mentioned it before. If you wanted to have a a function that return that captures an email uh, that they provide, takes that email and puts it into a database that eventually you can work with to send out a newsletter with. You can do that within the static application. Um, if you don't add an API, then you, you just have what is essentially HTML, CSS, whatever your specific um, type or blazer. You're just getting a straight uh, static website. When you implement APIs, you're able to do something like create a, a more dynamic web page. Great, thank you. We can maybe give it a few more seconds, see if any more questions come in. Um, that was all we had so far. Okay. Um, as we're finishing up here, as I mentioned in the beginning, I've put a link to our Microsoft Reactor survey in the announcements. If you have a few minutes to fill that out, that would be great. Um, we just ask a few simple questions. It should take you less than 60 seconds and just gives us a better idea of the type of events people are looking for, what topics everyone is interested in, and really helps us build out our event calendar. Um, so the link is in there for that. We've also added the link um, in the Q&A that Jay, that you shared on your slide. So we got that added in and yeah, we'll see if we get a few more, few more questions. Great, uh, and, and one of the things I want everybody to know is, is that if you work with Microsoft Learn, a lot of the things that we talked about today, uh, you have an opportunity to learn for free. Microsoft Learn is a uh, platform to give you free education uh, about different processes and, and procedures around DevOps. So it's not necessarily you're just doing things around Azure. You're actually getting DevOps education and Microsoft has a, uh, a specific DevOps um, certification. So you can actually take a lot of this um, information I gave you today. You can take a lot of the free education in uh, Microsoft Learn and uh, eventually find what your niche is to, uh, and maybe it's DevOps. 
and that you can become a certified DevOps professional. I really think that it's a need for everybody. Uh, certifications aren't the end all be all, but they sure do help people. And so uh, I'm gonna also put in our chat um, where you can go to check out Microsoft Learn. I'm gonna just shorten the link to make it super easy for everybody. Hit copy and paste. There you go. So what would be a big part of implementing a thorough testing process for the build. How do you determine if you're doing the right things when you automate the build process? That's a great question. And you know, I worked at a company uh, years ago where we had to actually, um, we did test dip driven development or TDD. And, and we believed in that anything that you were going to build, you needed to build a test for the feature to make sure that what your expected uh, outcome was going to happen. So if I had an application that uh, in my uh, prov providing it to the infrastructure, uh, that application is supposed to return a, a particular HTTP code or maybe return a specific string um, when you do a query of some kind, or maybe you're hitting an API and that API returns a certain thing. These are kind of the parts that you want to test against. So unit test to find individual changes. Uh, all, all these are really um, going to prevent bad things from getting in. So uh, tests are really, really useful if they are extremely practical for what you're building. I hope that answers your question. And if I don't see we have any more, um, I am happy to tell everybody, um, please check out um, my uh, my Twitch feed uh, every Thursday at um, 2 p.m. Eastern is Azure Fun Bites. If you like learning uh, starter content like this today, uh, every week uh, I get together, I provide more starter content. Um, I work together with other organizations that we can learn how their products work with Azure. and. Uh, Sometimes I, I, I actually do things with uh, different members of the community, ask them, what would you like to learn? Have them on the stream. So if uh, anyone wants to take part, uh, just check out that. Uh, we've got one on Thursday and I think you will dig it. Awesome. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Jay. Thank you all attendees for joining us uh, and have a good one. Take care. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching.